Good evening and welcome to the City of Pasco uh, regular uh, council meeting on August 15th, 2022. Um, my apologies, I'm sit st standing in for uh, the mayor tonight and so of course I'm not quite all prepared. So there we go. Um, well, we thank you for uh, taking part in your city government. The, at the meetings, um, the city council takes formal action on items, holds public hearings and conducts other business of the city. Roach, present. Serrano. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Maloney. Present. And Mayor Barajas. Mayor Barajas is excused this evening. All right, thank you. And if you would all please join me for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. Thank you for that. Moving on to item four, consent agenda. All items listed under the consent agenda are considered to be routine by the city council and will be enacted by a roll call vote as one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items. If further discussion is desired by the council members or the public, the item may be removed from the consent agenda to the regular agenda and considered separately. Items on the consent agenda tonight are the approval of the meeting minutes from our August 1st and August 8th, um, 2022 meetings. Um, claims for the amount of, and the total amount of $5,096,915.22. To, uh, to write off uh, bad debt in the amount of $175,417.70, and of that amount authorized $0 to be turned over to collections. A bid award for the A Street Sports Complex Phase 1. Project acceptance for the 20th Avenue Pedestrian Beacon Project and industrial and also the Industrial Way Retrofit Project. And a resolution for an amendment to the Pasco, uh, West Pasco Water Treatment Plant Phase 2 Agreement with RH2 Construction Services. Process Water Reuse Facility Phase 2, Amendment Number 3 with RH2 Engineering. An Amendment 2 to the East UGA Expansion Sewer LID Number 152 Agreement with RH2. And setting 7 p.m. September 6, 2022 as a, as a time and date for a public meeting to consider the notice to, uh, uh, for intent to commence annexation proceedings on the Alfred Cole Annexation. Those are the items on the uh, consent agenda. Is there any items that the council would like removed from the consent agenda? Any member of the public like to remove anything from the consent agenda? If not, I'd entertain a motion. I move to approve the consent agenda as read. We have a motion, is there we have a second? Second. And it's been seconded by Mr. Brown. Um, can we please have a roll call? Council member Serrano. Yes. Council Member Campos? Yes. Council Member Brown? Yes. Council Member Mill? Yes. Council Member Roach? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Maloney? Yes. It was unanimous. All right, thank you very much. With that, we'll move on to item number five proclamations and acknowledgments. So, item A, um, this is a pretty, pretty fantastic item, and I'm excited for it, and I will uh, happily turn this over to the chief in just a second. Um, but we have an opportunity to express our appreciation to three community members that um, really provide some outstanding service for the community. I'll, lead a, I'll read a letter in just a little bit, but um, Chief Gear, did you have some words first before I get going? Would you like me to read the letter and... Uh... Go ahead, read the letter and I'll fill in. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Chief. So, dear Mr. Uh, Villasenor, Mr. Root, and Mr. Alvarez, 
On behalf of the City of Pasco, City Council, and Fire Department personnel, we wish to thank you and your, and your crew members for taking the initiative to extinguish a residential structure fire on the afternoon of June 29, 2022. By noticing the smoke coming over the fence of the property located north of where you were working at the time and responding to it by using your company's water truck and personal fire extinguisher, you and your crews successfully contained the fire and saved the home from major fire damage. So thank you, and because of you, we all can be Pasco proud knowing that a home continues to stand today uh, because of your quick thinking and actions. So, Chief, do you want to supplement sure, that? Sure, just a then? little bit more. Um, for those of you who don't know, we've got, we're under phase one of construction of a new fire station on Road 100, and these gentlemen were working for C&E Trenching and just finishing up their workday uh, when they noticed that a house right across the fence from the station site, the outside siding was on fire. And one of them jumped over the fence with a fire extinguisher and knocked that down. Another one brought the water truck up that they had there and able to spray it and put that out. And it's a pretty long run for us um, from our closest stations, either the one at, up by 68 in Sandifer or, or 48 in Court. Um, so they, they contributed to minimizing extensively the damage that would have occurred to that home by the time fire units arrived. That's why we're building a fire station there because it's a long ways from our existing station. So with that, we have a letter of appreciation. And gentlemen, there's two of the three here. If you'd like to come up, we'll present you with a challenge coin and congratulate you. It's very easy sometimes for city council and city staff to very remember the people who work for the city and that, who are on the payroll. And it's another thing entirely to remember that we have, that we are a city of community members and who look out for one another. I think this is just an absolutely fantastic example of, of that community spirit and, and caring about one another. So again, just so grateful to have, to have people like you in the community. Thank you. Any other comments or from council? All right, I'll move on to item B, attendance awareness proclamation. Um, so I have an item here, but first, uh, I'll ask uh, Ms. Ayers to do some, to uh, introduce this topic, if that's all right. Great. Well, Mayor and City Council persons, thank you for this opportunity to really celebrate the City of Pasco's focus on the importance of education and changing the lives of each person, each child, each family, and the future of our community. As a proud resident of the City of Pasco, having raised children here and now a grandmama, and um, the proud daughter and mother of teachers, we know that attending school makes all the difference in learning. You can't learn unless you show up. And so many things get in the way of showing up. You know, life gets messy for families, and we really want to highlight the importance of attendance to graduation. And one day at a time, kids learn. So celebrating September as Attendance Awareness Month just reminds us all that if you see a kid at the corner grocery store and it's the middle of the day, hmm, we're all citizens of this town, like, aren't you supposed to be in school? Um, if you're a parent or a grandparent or a neighbor, if we can support getting our kids to school, that makes a huge difference in their learning outcomes. You know, in our community, about half of the kids show up not ready for kindergarten. And so that's already a barrier. So we need them there every day so that the, the important investment that teachers make and that parents make in their learning can have an outcome to create the future citizens, the future council members, the voters, the employees that you all need for your robust businesses. So keep your kids in school. And thank you, City Council. All right. Thank you very much. And with that, I'll read a proc proclamation and uh, bring it over to you in a second. So Attendance Awareness Month for September 2022. So whereas now, more than ever, good attendance in schools is essential to student achievement and, pro and progress towards graduation. Whereas the 
COVID-19 pandemic has created additional barriers to student participation in school. And whereas chronic absence missing 10%, which is two, to three, or th two or three days a month or more, is a proven predictor of academic trouble and dropout rates and weakens our community and local economy. And whereas all students, even those who show up regularly, are affected by chronic absence because teachers must spend time reviewing for students who miss lessons. And whereas student ab absenteeism can be significantly reduced when schools, parents, and communities work together to monitor and promote good attendance and address hurdles that keep children from, a, from participating in school. Um, therefore, we, as a, <laughs> I, on behalf of uh, Mayor Blanche Barajas, um, Mayor of the City of Pasco, do proclaim our city will stand with the nation in recognizing September as Attendance Awareness Month. We are hereby commit to focusing on, re on reducing absenteeism to give all children an equal opportunity to learn, grow, and thrive academically, emotionally, and socially. So with that, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, thank you all for that. So uh, with that, we'll move on to item number six, visitors and uh, other than agenda items. This item is, a, is provided to allow citizens the opportunity to bring items to the attention of the city council or to express an opinion on an issue. Its purpose is not to provide a venue for debate or for the posing of questions with the expectation of an immediate response. Some questions require consideration by council over time and after a deliberative process with the input from a number of different sources some, staff, some questions are best directed to staff members who have access to specific information. Citizens' comments will be, will be normally limited to three minutes each. Those with lengthy, lengthy messages are invited to summarize their comments and or submit written information for consideration um, by the council outside of formal meetings. And given I recognize a whole lot of folks in the room here, and I'm excited to hear from you all, uh, I do want to uh, give um, um, City Manager Zabel a quick um, update on what we know is a very hot topic right now, especially the folks in our downtown region. So, Mr. Zabel, if you can talk a little bit about process for us. Sure. Uh, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Maloney. So, we've had some comments. We had a presentation here at our previous we workshop on uh, retail cannabis in the uh, downtown C2 zone. We've also had a lot of discussion via email, uh, and I know conversations as well uh, outside of council, but uh, uh, it's a, it's, there's a lot to consider on this particular topic. Uh, we are preparing right now for the next workshop uh, coming up uh, on the 22nd next week. And uh, that'll be an opportunity for council, and certainly public input is welcome at this meeting tonight, but that'll give an opportunity for uh, council to talk a little bit more broadly about a number of the issues. So, retail, for instance, retail sales have been discussed, but the state law also provides for uh, wholesale sales as well as uh, agricultural, the growing of it, uh, probably at least something to discuss because we're going to have to talk to the public eventually uh, about this and to, to for them to understand uh, what's on the table, council has to make some policy decisions and provide some directions. We need to talk about whether we're talking about just downtown or are there other areas in the city we might want to consider. Uh, what kind of limitations might there be on a, on a uh, particular type of establishment, for instance, retail, cannabis, uh, would that be by special use uh, permit? What kind of zones, if by a special use permit, uh, again, what special provisions might, uh, might the council want to put on that type of use, in, regardless of the zone? Um, and uh, zone can also relate to place. And uh, so there, you know, there's a number of places in our community it could go. Uh, I don't know how acceptable that would be or where council's mind is on that. And so we need a little bit of direction on that. Uh, so those are, I think, some of the things I'm going to ask uh, Director White if he might have a couple other observations uh, as to other factors council might want to consider. Thank you, uh, Mr. Zabel. And uh, I think uh, City Manager summed it up quite well. The, the agenda report's uh, structured so that it poses questions that hopefully initiate council discussion on some of the issues uh, Mr. Zabel just mentioned. The permitting process, uh, the buffers, 
not just from other uh, sensitive land uses, but from other uh, I-502 uses. Um, what kind of uh, direction council wants to proceed in terms of growing, processing, and or retail sales, because each has its own set of implications. And then any kind of additional efforts to obtain public input on the whole menu of, of policy questions that uh, at least will be posed in some kind of discussion-oriented, rhetorical kind of atmosphere for next uh, Monday's uh, workshop session. So I think, you know, unfortunately, we're in a position of kind of having to put the council a little bit on the spot next Monday night to say, preliminarily, what, do we, what does council want to discuss? So that we can then do an outreach plan and get people understanding, here's the limits of what council wants to discuss. The final product, based on public input, may look completely different than what you uh, throw out there as a, as a realm of possibility. So it's kind of this iterative process we're going to go through, I think, over the next few months or several weeks, however council determines uh, to come to a conclusion. <clears throat> so. Great, thank you, um, Mr. Zabel and, and uh, Mr. White. Um, just to be clear, um, Mr. Zabel, will there be a, any, there will not be any sort of draft resolution or ordinance at, or at our next meeting next week, is that correct? No, it's pretty open-ended, just really trying to get some policy direction from council. I, I will note though, since you, you asked, there, there will be, depending on, what direction council gives you know I, i'll say i have every indication from discussions i've had with council there'll be plenty of opportunity for public input but typically in a workshop which includes our next meeting uh, that's really more a time for council to deliberate over the facts that they're able to be presented by council but uh you know i i think council and i don't mean to speak for council has, has indicated a pretty strong support for uh considerable public input on this issue Great. Thank you very much, Mr. Zabel and, um, and, and Director White for, for your comments tonight. Um, next time, I'll, I'll add it as part of this. Um, we, do have a, we do have a translator um, in our audience tonight. If anyone needs translation services, that will be our official City of Pasco translator. Um, her name is Araceli uh, Guidry. If I got that right? All right, excellent. Um, so if you, do need, if you need translation services, and I'd ask, please, if you could translate what I'm saying right now to the audience as well for, for those who may not be able to understand me. Uh, Buenas tardes, soy Araceli uh, Guidry. Estoy uh, aquí para traducir en, uh, de inglés a español y de español a inglés. Si necesitan servicios de intérprete, estoy aquí disponible. Gracias. Excellent. And last time I'd, I'd like to mention is, um, obviously there's, uh, as Mr. Zabel is in, in indicating, I think uh, the council has made a clear preference for additional public input along the way, so we're not, we're not done yet. Um, and so what we're looking for um, in public comment on, on any topic is new information, not repeating what someone else has already said, and we're looking for new perspectives as well. So those are what we're really looking tonight. So not intended to limit the public comment, but I, we'd ask that um, given our, our you know, limited time that we have here on the council meeting that we'd ask for you to, again, focus on new information and new perspectives that we haven't heard yet. With that, I'd ask uh, any member of public that would like to come and, and share, share some thoughts with us tonight. Sir, could you please state your name uh, uh, for the record? Yeah, it's uh, Jerry Martinez. Um, good evening, Council. I've been I've been meaning to come by and just speak to you all, um, but I've been waiting for the right time. Um, and I realize I'm quickly learning in this role. There is no such thing as the right time. Um, so I'm the new executive director for the Downtown Pasco Development Authority. Tomorrow will mark two months um, for me in that role, and I just want to take this time to introduce myself. Um, I was born and raised in Kennewick. I'm the son of two migrant farm workers from El Salvador, and in 2020, I became the first in my family to graduate from a four-year institution. I graduated from Washington State University, go Cougs, um, with a degree in finance. And um, since then, I've worked for the United Farm Workers Foundation, the Group Health Foundation, um, and I'm very honored to come back to, to my hometown and um, really develop um, something here for us. Um, some of my long-term vision for the DPDA is to really focus on the basics and focus on the foundation piece that I feel like has been left behind um, for previous iterations of the DPDA. Um, and, you know, if I could leave you all with two things, it's, it's one, this position is very difficult. And some days I feel like I'm, I'm just chugging along, inching along, and some days it feels like, you know, I didn't make any progress at all. Um, but in that same vein, the second thing I would want to leave you all with is I felt nothing but tremendous support from our community here in Pasco, 
um, the board members, city staff, and, and business owners that I've had the pleasure to meet. I haven't met them all yet, um, but I feel like our community is very, is, is very supportive of the best for downtown. Um, I'm excited to work with you all and the rest of our community moving forward. Um, and with that, I want to keep it short because I know you got a long one today. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Who else would like to join? Gentlemen, can I come up to the table? Hi, my name is Doug White. I'm the Democratic candidate for the 4th Congressional, and I'm from Yakima. I came down here just to say I believe that uh, local politics is the backbone of this nation, and I appreciate the opportunity for people such as myself to be able to speak directly to our elected officials, which isn't something we usually get to do or do very often. Uh, five months ago, I didn't know much about PASCO, but since then, I've spent a lot of time down here. I mean, a lot. I've knocked on hundreds of doors. I've shaken thousands of can, can I just, I'm sorry, can I pause you for a second? I'll, I'll pause your timer as well. But um, Mr. Ferguson, um, I know there are some specific laws about campaigning and public facilities. This is not campaign. And I just want to make sure what we've gotten from our legal, um, on, on any advice of where we might step up, please just feel free to signal me. Sure, sounds good. Okay, we're right. good right now? You're good right now. Excellent. Yep. Good right now. My Thank apologies you very for, much. for interrupting, but it's that's good really to important. Check. It really is. So, you know, I just wanted to say I've knocked on hundreds of doors. I've shook thousands of hands and I've listened to everybody that would talk to me. And you know, and there's a lot of pain in this community. There's lots of pain in lots of communities. But one of the things that I learned about Pasco is there's this sense of community that just is different than many other places I go. One, you've got a downtown. One of my members of my team actually chose to move to Pasco while they're working on my campaign. And it is a joy every time I come down here to be able to spend time. And I know it's because of the fact that it is people like you that step up with the passion and the dedication and the hard work in order to make sure that the community continues to grow in the most positive way. So just kind of following on the voice of him, thank you very much for all that you do. That's Excellent. it. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, who else would like to, uh, to speak tonight? Sir, if you're going to speak, your, say your name for the record, please. My name is John Penny. Uh, I'm actually not a citizen of Pasco, but I wanted to give my perspective on the proposed uh, cannabis shop for Pasco. Um, I'm only here to provide information on neither for or against the dispensary in the city limits. Um, I like to keep things as simple as possible for me personally. Um, I see business as business, and if business sells something I like, I purchase it. If they do not sell something I like, I do not purchase it. It is simple as that. Um, for me, I do not consume cannabis. Um, but just for transparency, uh, I mean, everything that happens in Pasco directly affects me and my family. Not only do I work in Pasco on a regular basis, I live within a mile of where we're standing now. Um, and I also think my perspective may be of some use as I have worked uh, with the homeless community and the addicted population for five years. I have two years of prior law enforcement experience as the director of home detention for Pima County, Arizona. I have a degree in addiction and currently operate as the director of recovery services for Three Rivers Therapy, specifically to this topic today. Um, I'm overseeing the Recovery Navigator program. Um, I'm not here to promote the services we provide, but rather elevate the people who consume our services. Uh, just for a little bit of clarity and context, the Recovery Navigation program is responsible uh, for responding to non-emergency calls um, for people that are suffering from substance use disorder. We receive referrals from our local law enforcement agencies, fire departments, crisis response, um, emergency rooms, as well as self-referrals. Uh, since the program launched April of this year, we have received 156 referrals with 136 calls uh, for service directly. Um, of those referrals, only 11 uh, have reported consuming THC, and only three of those were homeless. Um, and I would like to take a second and compare that to something like alcohol, which is sold right down the street. Um, that accounted for 15 of the referrals. Of those 15, 10 were homeless. Uh, and what is significant about that information, the, uh, of the 11 cannabis reported usages, um, zero of them needed to attend uh, inpatient detox services, and all have been able to significantly change uh, their life circumstances through non-intensive case management. That's the, the lowest level of case management that we offer. Of the 15 who reported alcohol use, only seven consented to services. All had to attend inpatient detox in Yakima and Spokane County, as we don't have one in ours. Uh, without medical detox, the possibility for health complications significantly rises. Things like uh, 
seizures, uh, death. I mean, it's one of the only things that you can withdraw from that can literally kill you. Okay. Um, it if, undermines. If you, can, if you can wrap up, about 10 seconds left. 10 seconds, that's three minutes? Yep. Okay. Uh, to further this conversation, I would like to talk with city council some more. Um, the comparison, I think, is relevant between marijuana and alcohol. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. And if you have any additional comments, we'd love to hear them uh, via, um, if you want to email us or come to a different council meeting, that'd be sure. absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Anytime. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Who else would like to speak tonight? And again, I'd encourage um, new information and new perspectives. Um, but My name is Shiloh Morgan. David Morgan. So I wanted to kind of give you guys a little backstory of the Morgans. Um, David was born and raised here in Pasco. We started our family here. Um, we still live part-time in our family home here in Pasco. Our, ch our children attended St. Pat's, where I was the chair of the St. Pat's auction for three years and was the co-chair for the fun run at St. Pat's. David graduated from WSU Tri-Cities with his bachelor's degree in digital technology and culture in 2009. After graduating, we opened our first business, which was Versatile Design Studios, um, where we worked with the Tri-City Chamber of Commerce and the Tri-City Fever. Um, that's when I started my volunteering with Junior Achievements was in 2010. Um, I did it for five years. I brought Pasco High and New Horizons to the state competition. My team from New Horizons won the state competition two years in a row. Before that, um, New Horizons was never a part of Junior Achievements. Um, my son and I have always been a big, big part of the Leprechaun Limbo since it started. Um, we continued until it, uh, till the last event in 2020. And then here, fast forward to today, our daughter Malaya has two businesses of her own and a little girl who is 18. So we are grandparents, we're just like everybody else. Um, Layla is for sure a papa's girl. Um, our son, David Jr., is, uh, he's top 24 in basketball at Lewis and Clark High School. Um, it's just hard because some people look at this as like, we're coming here to make money and we're re really from here. Um, you know, we moved away because we went over there to open, because we were able to open over there. Um, it was very difficult for me to leave because I wanted to stay here. I wanted my kids to, to grow up in, in the same spot that, you know, my husband grew up in. So um, our son is top 24 at Lewis and Clark High School. He works at We Play in Spokane at the Valley Mall. He wants, he wants to be able to coach youth sports in, in basketball. <laughs> I would love to continue volunteering and helping the community here in Pasco once we are able to open our store. It was really hard for me to move from Pasco to Spokane. I had a great community at St. Pat's. I went to school to be a teacher. Um, I had a great preschool there that I was, you know, with great community of people. So it was a, a tough one for, for me to leave. Um, being able to come back would be, you know, great. Our kids, you know, love it here. They want to be able to come home to their home. And that's something we've always kind of dreamed about doing. I just, you know, some people look at this as like it's, you know, they look at it at, at a negative, you know. And it's, All right, thank we're you. trying to just Thank you bring so much for your back. comments. We're out of time today, but thank you very much. And if we, we do have some tissues here if you'd like to. <laughs> thank you. Does anybody have any questions for me? <laughs> Thank you. All right, um, ma'am. Are we, are we doing, do you need translation services? Yes. Okay, great. Buenas noches, señores del concilio. Do we need our turn? Do we need to wait? Or is it just open? I'm sorry, I'm not sure what question you're asking. Do we need to wait a minute, or is she okay to go ahead now? We're ready to go ahead. If you just go ahead and push the button there on the, um, or either on, yeah. All right, please. 
Buenas noches, señores del concilio. Mi uh, nombre es Verónica Ramírez. Uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the council. Uh, my name is Verónica Ramírez. Uh, Verónica Ramírez. Soy dueña de un negocio ahí en el downtown de Pasco. I'm the owner of a business downtown Pasco, downtown, in downtown Pasco. Y la razón por la que estoy aquí. And the reason why I'm here. Es para pedirles de su apoyo. Is to ask for your support que nos apoyen uh, a los guys, negocios del downtown. For you guys to support uh, the businesses, uh, to support us and the businesses in downtown. No estamos en contra de la tienda de marihuana, no. We Sabemos are not. que es medicinal y a mucha gente ha ayudado en muchas enfermedades. Si puede pasar cada uh -huh. un par de frases, por favor. Uh, we are not against the marijuana uh, shop. In fact, uh, we know that it has uh, helped in many cases uh, in medicinal um, um, uh, cases. El detalle aquí es el lugar donde la quieren poner. The detail or the issue here is the place where they want to place it or uh, put it at. Estamos de acuerdo que la pongan aquí en Pasco. We are in agreement uh, with uh, them putting it here in Pasco. Pero no en el downtown. But not downtown. El problema ahorita que tenemos nosotros que les estamos pidiendo allí a gritos la ayuda de ustedes es la inseguridad. The problem that we have right now that we are uh, screaming, uh, basically imploring, uh, begging you guys uh, uh, for is uh, for safety. Safety. Okay. Ahorita a las 12, a 2 de la tarde, el fin de semana, si ustedes pasan por el downtown, hay personas haciendo urgías, familias caminando en el downtown con sus hijos y todo, y drogándose, y es mucha inseguridad para la gente que viene de afuera. Right now, if you walk downtown uh, on the weekend uh, from noon to 2 o'clock, uh, you see people on the streets having orgies, uh, drugging themselves, uh, and I do apologize if I miss some of the information. I'm used to talking right when people talk simultaneously. Um, hay personas teniendo orgías. Drogas, drogándose, yeah. drugging, uh, using drugs, um, las familias caminando. and families are walking around with their children uh, in that environment. De hecho, los clientes me han comentado in fact, que clients have mentioned to me si that a pasar más cosas aquí en Pasco, ya no quieren venir if aquí al anything downtown. else happens uh, here in downtown Pasco, they don't want to come uh, here anymore por la inseguridad y a nosotros los negocios nos ha costado mucho trabajo que la gente venga a consumir aquí a downtown. Uh, because of the insecurity or uncertainty or lack of uh, uh, security there or safety, I should say, I do apologize, uh, that there is in downtown. Um, and it has been very difficult for us uh, uh, through our hard work to be able to have those businesses there. Nada más les pedimos de su apoyo, yo representando a los negocios de downtown, por favor. We just ask for your support, uh, me in representation of the businesses at downtown, please. Muchas gracias, buenas noches. Thank you very much, good night. Thank you. And I will note that I gave, I gave additional time because of the translation, so that did go over three minutes, but that was not three minutes of, the, of, of public comment. Thank you. My name is Delia Hernandez. I own two businesses in downtown Pasco in one house. And sorry, but I'm really angry. Uh, there's a lot of things happening to me, to my business. You see my place, it looks like piñata from people from the street that comes and break windows and do my cars too, damages. I keep calling the police. Sometimes I had to call from a different number because they don't want to come help me. I hear a lot of trouble with kids and old people smoking marijuana outside my places. I own reception halls, and it's not good to smell that thing. Um, I remember, and I want to point someone, sorry, but back, like 2004, I was asking for permission to open a place 
to do dances for the young people. Only dances with no drinks, nothing at all. And the city, city of Pasco then let me, they don't let me chance to do that because they said that they, go, they want to bring people to chop downtown. They don't want businesses like mine. So I had to hire a lawyer to come and help me and I asked for people to come with me. First time was like 15, 50 per, uh, of the members voting on favor. And by the next time, only one Spanish of the committee was on my favor. And you know why? Because Mr. Rick White was knocking doors of the neighborhood to people asking to sign because they don't want my uh, place out there. And I don't think that's the right thing and they're not supposed to be happening. I think the committee need to be looking for something good for our place, for the, our downtown. I've been there for a long time and I don't care if they want to open their businesses they believe in is they how the only way they feel uh, to make money. I make money the right way, not to sell in drugs, not to sell in alcohol, not to sell in cigarettes. But if they want to open their, their shop, that's okay. But I hope they can go out from the city. We have my kids with me in the business the whole time because we have a house behind. And you really need to come and see Damias. About 10 seconds left. Yeah, sorry. I received tickets many times of the city because those people come and do a lot of stuff outside my business and throwing garbage and everything. I'm sorry. Yeah. We need help. We don't want this anymore. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much. And if there's anything you, you'd like to um, distribute to council, please just go ahead and uh, hand it to the clerk. Otherwise, um, feel free to send us a follow-up email or anything. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem, could I interrupt yes, real quick? Please. Could, could we just make that announcement for everybody so we're not having to do that after everything? Can everybody, if you have anything after you talk or, or don't get a chance to, can you provide that information to the clerk before you leave tonight, please? This Deborah right here. Mm -hmm. This lovely lady to my right. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Campos. Yeah, so, please, hi, yeah. my name is Lisa Lopez, and I was born and raised here. My mother went to walk the fields to get to Pasco High back in her day. And I'm listening to all these different, some of these ladies talk about business in downtown Pasco. And I've been watching City Pasco spend money on downtown Pasco, including the peanut, which I really am not thrilled about that. But because we have lots of areas we can spend money on, she wants to talk about all the dirtiness downtown, all the drugs, all the sex activity that's going on. It's more of an issue than a pot shop opening up. That's more of a city issue that we need to work on and figure out how we can clean that up and stop that from happening. Because every time I come down to downtown Pasco, and I love my Pasco, it's very discouraging. It's dirty, and there's just so much going on that it shouldn't be happening, and it's happening. What's the answer? I don't know, but that's what we need to look forward to work on. And especially as city employees, as city members, as city of Pasco, um, residents, that's something we need to work on. We can't blame somebody else for what's happening in their front door. If nobody is responding to her 911 calls about the drug addict shooting up in front of her business, that's something that the city should be following up on. Um, I understand what she's saying, but she can't blame a business for that. And I just, I'm in dis disbelief in what I see happening throughout the years. So, so the peanut, for example, millions of dollars what's the idea with that who's using it we're not even using it because no vendors are signing up why are no vendors signing up because the city of pasco bought the thunder hotel that looks like trash over there it's like what are we doing why are we spending money in this way when we have a business who's going to be paying the city of pasco tons of tax money and we can't say that smoking pot is an addiction and it's causing the cocaine and the heroin and all the other issues that are happening that there's so much more to that so I think we really need to focus on what the city can do to help this and what, what the reality is and what the problems are and how we can fix the issues, not make excuses about why this is happening or why this doesn't happen. So that's my three-minute talk, and I hope it was worth something. 
because I just, it's frustrating when I see all these things happening. I'm like, I would love a volunteer park over on 100 and Road 68. You know, I would love my lawn where my drive, my driveway on Sylvester and Court Street to have a nice sidewalk and the city of Pasco be paying for the trees and all the trimming that goes on on Burden and everywhere else. So those are other issues that I like to talk about and like to think of you guys to think about. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. All right, thank you. Ma'am. Mi nombre es Esther Romero y estoy aquí porque no es que queramos que, que no pongan esa tienda. My name but, is Esther Romero and I am here because it's not that we want them to uh, uh, set up that store there or place that store there. No más lo que queremos es más seguridad porque hay mucha gente drogada. Uh, the only thing that we want is more uh, safety because there's a lot of people uh, on drugs. Y yo tengo nietos y, y yo los veo y me da mucha tristeza que, que ver tantas personas jóvenes en las calles que pueden trabajar, que pueden estudiar y por andar en eso no lo hacen. And I, um, I have grandchildren and uh, it's uh, very sad for me to uh, see that these people are on the streets using drugs. Um, uh, when they could uh, work, and because of uh, doing drugs, they do not uh, do it. Basically, they don't work. Y pues, si la pueden poner, pero que sea fuera de, de donde están todos los negocios, porque hay personas que andan drogadas y se meten a nuestras tiendas, y si no les damos dinero, nos quieren quebrar las ventanas. And they can uh, put it there, uh, but let it be outside of our uh, um, area. If it can be outside city uh, limits, uh, uh, so that there are no uh, drug addicts or people on drugs uh, uh, that break into our stores. Uh, when they do break into our stores, uh, they uh, uh, get angry when we don't give them money um, and um, cause problems. Y lo, lo que yo digo es que la pueden poner, pero no tan cerca, para que haya más seguridad para los clientes y para nosotros. What I say is that they can put it there, but not uh, close by, so that there's more safety um, for us and for our uh, clients. Porque yo tengo una hija que tiene Down síndrome, y si llega una persona de esas y, le, y ella no sabe que es malo o bueno y que llega con un arma y ella no va a saber nada. Because I have a daughter who has a Down syndrome and if a person gets close uh, uh, to us and comes by and uh, they have a weapon, uh, they could uh, hurt her uh, and she uh, doesn't know anything. Y eso es todo lo que les puedo decir y muchísimas gracias si nos ayudan y nos apoyan. Pues nosotros estaríamos muy felices de, de estar en esta ciudad que nos ha ayudado tanto. And well, that's all I can tell you guys. And uh, I want to thank you uh, very much for uh, helping us and uh, letting us be there. And I'm thankful to the city who has um, helped us so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right, ma'am. You can say your name for that record, please. Hi, my name is Cindy Hewitt. Um, I currently reside at um, 1509 West Washington. My property um, backs up against a large field that is owned by Burlington Northern. Um, throughout the years, I've had to deal with so many homeless people that try to live out there and so, I got to go out there and say, no, this is private property. You cannot live here. And I call the police and sometimes they get there quickly and sometimes they drag their feet. So I have to deal with it. And quite frankly, I'm tired of dealing with it. Um, I've called Burlington Northern on numerous, numerous occasions and explained to them what the pro problem is with no feedback. Um, and it's not just the people out there trying to live in the field. The field is nothing but dead trees and weeds. It's a tinderbox. Um, for years, 
I kept a 15 foot strip. So because the field has been on fire before and every year parts of it catch on fire. I kept a strip by my house so that as a fire block, I can't do that anymore because a large tree fell down and it completely covers the area. I'd have to hire somebody to come in and clean it up in order to make that strip again. Um, I, I know Burlington Northern does not believe they have a responsibility to the people that live in my neighborhood, but they do. They don't not only have a responsibility to my neighborhood, but they have a responsibility to the city of Pasco because it's an eyesore and it's dangerous. And I know I personally had a sigh of relief when you guys cut down all those olive trees that were right there at the path and 13th and Lane and put up the cages underneath the bridge. It makes it a lot safer. I mean, their responsibility is to clean up that field, clean it up, keep it clean, keep it mowed so people can't go out there and hide in the weeds and the trees. And because I've called them and I get no response, I feel like now it's your turn. Now you have to make them do what they should have done all along. Okay. If I had a house anywhere and I had people, homeless people uh, living there, uh, making a mess, uh, doing drugs, and somebody called on me, you guys would make me clean it up. So why is this any different? Why do I have to do this? I mean, what's the next step? Do I have to get all the people in my community to sign a waiver? Do we have to get a lawyer? Something has to be done. And just for the record, uh, you guys are building a homeless shelter, which is only going to exasperate the problem way big, way big. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, your time's up. But um, Director White, could you speak very, very briefly to how, um, the, uh, how the previous speaker might be able to file a code enforcement complaint? I'll just make sure that that's easily done online, ma'am. Um, there's a how do I do things on our website, and one of them is file a code enforcement complaint, and okay. that's you can easily do that or do it in person here at City Hall. Okay, well, I've spoken with uh, Joseph Campos, um, he never told me that I could do this, and I certainly will. But not only that, there's a lot of things you don't know how to do. Yeah, yeah so, so excuse I, me, excuse me, we're gonna have to keep the uh, the conversation down. Uh, actually, actually, if, able to yeah, if I could, the Burlington Northern is aware of this. The code enforcement officer is already on it. Happen while you're out, Rick. So there's already an action taking place based on your conversation with the council member Campos. Did they? Did they give you a date as to when you, they might? We're have... we're speculating probably another. It's going to be another week before they can get to it. But I, and I don't know the scope of what they're going to do. But I just share with you what I know. So okay. There are people that know about it, and there's action being taken. I did also want to chime in. <clears throat> I have my property also borders the Burlington Northern, and I actually have the contact who I deal with uh, when I see homeless in the fields off of Lewis Street. And I've actually seen the uh, Burlington Northern police do patrols in that area, um, and I could give that information to Dave Zabel. But uh, I call him directly, and usually he's within a couple hours. But you call Burlington Northern themselves. I'm just saying you call Burlington Northern themselves, you get nothing. I mean, yeah. I've been very frustrated, but I've talked to the officer himself. Okay. Too, well, on several occasions, and he is as irresponsive as Burlington Northern. Okay. He really well, is. Maybe right. it's a different officer. I'm right. just telling you. Point, point of you. order. Point yeah. of order. Can I can I bring something up? This proclamation's acknowledgments. We're not supposed to expect or, or have anybody acknowledge it. And I just want to point out, Mayor Maloney, Pro Tem Maloney, can we, if we have any issue like that, can we can we bypass it? I understand this is just part of how we're supposed to operate tonight. Certainly. Certainly, I just want to make sure that the staff was able to clarify Absolutely. the process for the whole community. Absolutely. So thank you. Just, thank you, Council Member Campos. All right. Uh, anyone else like to speak to me? Sir. My name is Octavio Rodriguez. I'm a builder, and I have spent thousands of dollars in downtown Pasco, and I heard everybody's complaining about business that haven't even opened yet, blaming the homeless people, which is they don't even know if it's going to happen or not. What we want is new business in town to make downtown Pasco look alive. Because if you drive at 9 o'clock at night, it's nobody driving. Homeless people look empty properties, empty lots to come and sleep over. I start building right here across the street from here. After I start building, there's no more homeless people. Why blaming in a new business? 
like this lady was blaming and Rick White that he never gave him a permit. They didn't give him a permit because she didn't have the, the, whatever needed to be a permit. It's, they have to see what it is, not blaming in a new business. I spent thousands of dollars to shut it down businesses. I got so many investors that don't want to come at downtown Pasco because dead. When new business come, they shut it down. Looking at it that way, they're never going to change. If you let no, more people come and make downtown Pasco alive after 9 o'clock, homeless people, they start going away. I own properties downtown Kennewick, and the same thing happened. They start building, there's no more homeless people. But people don't see the reality of homeless people. They want empty lots to sleep. Because nobody bothered them. That's why they started coming over and coming over. And when people come in and cleaning or do something, they walk away. Why blaming these guys? Because somebody paint their wall, somebody break their window. That has nothing to do with the new business. And homeless people, they're homeless people because they decide to be a homeless people. Some of it, they're sick, they got addiction of drugs, but it has nothing to do with marijuana, I guarantee you. Because marijuana don't make zombies for the street. There's different drugs by the use. Now blaming on a new business because I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars in downtown Pasco to make shutdown businesses. They calm me down to my business. It's for everybody. Not because somebody paint a wall, they're going to shut down somebody's business. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. <laughs> sir? Can you say your name for the record, please? Hi, uh, my name is Eduardo Marquez. Uh, I just moved here from Sunnyside. Yay. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I noticed one thing that causes me concern, and the thing is the real root problem, which is uh, asking around, there's no detox to get those homeless people out of here. Not just move away, but help them to get out of the street. You know? That is the major issue right now that I see. It's like if you, until you solve, until you give them an opportunity to solve their addiction problem, they were always gonna be there, you know? And that's the neglect of all of us, everybody here, because we all had the opportunity to vote, you know? That's the sad part. Uh, my twin sister, she worked for the Girl Scouts and I drove Gosh, all the way to Silverwood to take the girls with my sister over there. And I drove back, and as we were dropping off the girls to the house, I got scared. I got scared because there was a lot of dangerous things going outside. As these children have to go home and sad to say, you know, avoid or resist the temptations. And if anybody says, oh, it's this guy's fault, it's this guy's fault, no, no. We have a horrible culture of blaming somebody else when it's us, you know? We are the ones that cause this. Everybody here, you know? You know, I don't drink. It's been 10 years since I had a drink. I'm not gonna blame the store for somebody else drinking. But at the same time, I gotta help the person suffering, you know? I understand, I'm, I'm a Mexican. My culture's embedded in me. I love it because we love our families. And the grandmothers are scared because they see where the progression of how they used to be to how they are now, and it's scary, you know? What's the city doing to resolve this? Are we talking about a detox to get people help? You know, are you helping them uh, with the crime problem, what's it? What are we doing? What have I done today to resolve this? That's the problem. Thank you. I have a whole different subject. Can I talk again? I'm, I'm sorry, ma'am. We're going to have to limit comments tonight. As you can see, it's already getting pretty late. So we're, we're at, we'd love for you to come back in a, um, at our next business meeting, or send us an email, or well, I think, uh, give the clerk a call. I appreciate that, but we're, we're going to have to move on to other speakers. Is there anyone else tonight that, need, that would like to speak? Ma'am? And then. Hi. Um, my name is Michelle Fister, and I grew up across the street from Longfellow, and um, I currently live in Kennewick. But um, Pasco's been my town most of my life, and 
I don't see any problems with the revenue coming into the city. It just seems kind of lame that everybody's pointing fingers at different things just to try to bypass what they really feel is they're scared. Um, it seems kind of ridiculous. Revenue is revenue. However, it gets here, and that's a massive amount of revenue. I'm a real estate agent. That just makes my spidey senses go crazy. I mean, I you're going to bring in tax money and revenue for the city, for the county, for the state, and that goes straight to education. It goes straight to jobs, it, and you're going to bring people in here that are shopping for that or going to shop for other things. You're going to be having other businesses come in because of that business. It just It's just revenue on top of revenue on top of revenue, and if you just let the business build itself, all of this other stuff falls apart and falls away, and it all will take care of itself. It's just, if you watch how businesses grow and towns rebuild themselves, they do this downtown. You guys are already refurbishing downtown. You're already doing the legwork. Let these businesses come in fresh and bring people in to spend their money here where we need it spent because that money comes back to us as roads and sidewalks and developments. It all works. I just... I'm sorry, I'm going to be done, but just let the business be business. <laughs> Take the emotion out. Thank you. I'll keep it short. Leo Porales, 3902 Charleston Lane. First, I want to say congratulations to new Councilman Irving Brown. I'm a member of your district, and we look forward to, you know, starting a dialogue and and uh, I guess addressing complex issues, which brings me to the meat of what I wanted to talk about, which was um, I'm a member of the Latin Business Association, um, also a community member. And uh, our association is not against businesses. We want to see diversification of businesses in downtown. Um, we just don't want to see a marijuana shop in downtown. I think there's other places across the city, um, namely maybe perhaps King City. There's a lot of uh, development that's going to be happening out there. I think. We think it would be a good fit for out there or just anywhere on the outskirts of town. Again, we're not against business. Um, and we look forward to more dialogue with the city council um, in regards to this issue because this is a very complex issue and, and we would be the first of the tri city cities to allow it. Um, I will just make some notes. You know, the amount of money coming in from this may not be that much. Uh, David Morgan did a presentation. Uh, city of Spokane only got about $800,000 again, not that much money. And, and again, I, I think our main focus from the Latin Business Association and other business owners is that we've made lots of investments in downtown. $36 million for Lewis Street Overpass, $6.5 million for Peanuts Park, um, bought the Thunder, Bourbon Motel. We're making those investments right now to make it a family-friendly environment, which is what we want. Ultimately, it's up to the council to decide if they want to allow this type of business in the downtown. Again, we've heard from people, um, someone new from Sunnyside, um, that they're scared to kind of go in downtown, and we have many things we need to address. We're not saying that, and I hope people don't get from David Morgan's presentation, that that's going to make all that stuff go away. We all know we have work to do, but we don't think that a business of that uh, nature is going to clean up everything. It's just not going to happen. But again, we just want to make um, the businesses that we represent heard, and, and ultimately, it's up to you guys, and, and hopefully there's an advisory vote and more public input, because I believe there's lots of people who don't want to come down here who are scared, um, that own businesses, um, who just don't want to be in the spotlight. And, and hopefully, we can urge them to contact their council members um, to let their voice heard. But again, uh, we just think there's probably better areas for this type of business. Again, we're, so that's the that's Latin Business Association, and we submitted a, uh, one of our pages of, of petitions that we've gathered from downtown business owners. Um, we're going to continue to get more uh, closed loop on those, and we'll, we'll, we will be submitting more of those petitions, uh, signatures to you guys here in the couple days. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Gaudencio Felipe. I'm living here in Pasco, 109th, North 9th, uh, in Pasco for almost 35 years. I'm sorry I don't speak English very well, but I'm to try to, to my, be, my best. Uh, when I'm coming here the, the first time, for five years I'm working in the field, speaking asparagus, cherries, and apples. And this time, uh, the Lewis Street 
is a, a lot of people, they sell a lot of drugs. And this time, uh, the business Tab Hub was open 24 hours uh, every day. I see a lot of prostitution, drugs, a lot of people in this in this time. Lately, later, I see when Pasco changed, the different business, they leave to the other area. The Spanish people, they buy the propers. Right now in Pasco, we are maybe 70% the community Spanish in, in this area. I know the city to try to work uh, for, for bring more people. We see the change, a lot of investment in the park the, uh, and the business. But I think, in my opinion, the other day I came into my home, my home, I am the smelling marijuana. My last son has 32, uh, 22 years. I had my, uh, my nieto, sorry, uh, my grandson. He has almost 15 years. When I'm coming to the, my home, I'm not smelling marijuana. I'm asking today, I'm saying, who, who, who smoked marijuana? They told me, no, maybe my friends, they come in. When I, I see in close to my, my home, it's a lot of people living there because they don't have home. I'm to try to give a food, but they don't want in food. They wanted money. I'm asking why why living there? They told me they coming from Seattle or from Portland, the big city, because the people they not wanting to live in there. They to invite coming to these areas, small towns. That's when and I I respect the business they wanted to put in uh, for sales uh, CBD. I'm thinking, okay, right now it's legal in this country. Sir, if you could please wrap it up, thank you. Huh? If you could please wrap up, thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, okay. My point is uh, we wanted to support the, the business, but in the area, not in Pasco, because it's inclusive for the Spanish community. Right now, all the people in the working in the field, we don't have nobody. Uh, uh, Okay, thank you, sir. I'm sorry okay. I stop. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and I, I will note that we are we're now past eight o'clock, so we've been listening to public comment for about an hour. Um, and so um, we ask for the last couple of comments, um, yeah. and then I'll ask for no further conversation on um, uh, regarding the topic of retail cannabis sales. But if there's other topics that we haven't heard yet today at all, I'd invite I'd invite those. So uh, please. David Cortinas, 411 West Clark, Downtown Pasco, uh, Executive Director for the Latin Business Association. Uh, today I bring uh, 15 pages of, of uh, signatures and business owners. 81 business owners have signed against the uh, store downtown. Uh, 150 names of residents uh, have signed the petitions to uh, against a, a store downtown Pasco. Now, as an advocate for business, I, I, I agree with a lot of them that have said here, we, we need more business but we don't need a pot store downtown. We don't need a pot store to come down to be the savior of downtown Pasco. You, the city council, have already made good decisions on spending money and investing downtown Pasco. You're doing it. We don't need a pot store to, to uh, try to beautify downtown. Walla Walla didn't become the city that it is today by putting in a, a pot store downtown. Grandview, Sunnyside, Toppenish, they're all beautifying their downtowns. None of them have got a pot store downtown. All of them, Prosser, all of them are beautifying their communities. And they don't get revenue for it by having a store downtown. Excuse me, can, now, can we keep if the, we, one second, Mr. Yes. Uh, Cortinez, can we please keep the audience uh, comments down? Um, we want to allow him the, the same uh, courtesy that everyone else had. Thank no, you. Please, we, please we have talked to David, we told David, hey, you have every right to sell your, your, your product. You're, it's okay. But don't put it downtown where 95% of our Mexican business owners have been working hard and striving and buying up their properties and beautifying their properties the best they can without a pot store. 
Everybody agrees there's problems downtown. We can't blame all those problems downtown on a marijuana because there is no marijuana, but we still have those problems. Adding a pot store would even increase more. So we know, and, and, and we've done our studies, we've done our work, we've done our homework. If you go put it out in Road 68, it's not going to be this crowd that's going to be here. It's going to be those businesses out there that are going to fill this chamber, screaming and shouting, we don't want it out here. Or you go put it out on Road 100, see what happens with those residents. It's going to be a whole different crowd of people come in here, saying, hey, we don't want it out here. And we have taught today, Dave, go to King City. We'll support you there. We will promote you. But we don't want it downtown Pasco, where there's these Mexican business owners are striving to do the best they can. And, and the revenue, we're still going to get the revenue we're still getting this revenue that they keep talking about, lots and lots of money. It's not a lot of money. I will. Give you the it's not a lot of money. It is some money, but it's not a lot of money. It, it, it's some money, and we'll still get it if they're outside of downtown Pasco. So the Latin Business Association, you know, we, we've done our work. Last thing I want to just mention, Mr. Maloney. I'm, I'm sorry, you, you are out of time. I've yeah. been very courteous about everyone's time. So if you have anything that you'd like to deliver to the clerk, we'd really appreciate that. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, this evening, um, if I, I'd like to, um, I think after an hour of, of testimony and I think additional comments that the, re the rest of the council are, uh, and certainly myself would be interested in hearing, I'd be very interested in understanding further about other conversations other than cannabis this evening. Um, and so if, if anyone would like to submit written comments about cannabis, we're interested in hearing that. There will be further discussion at our, at our workshop meeting next week where we will, where we will be talking with staff about and making some decisions as council. Um, but I'd encourage and ask for anyone that is not interested in speaking tonight on retail cannabis that has not yet spoken today. Please, sir. Oh, Can sorry. Uh, Excuse me. Um, yeah, 402 West Lewis, Carl Holder, uh, the, the location of the retail uh, cannabis store. You know, we've had a lot of uh, conversation and obviously slow, slow rolling by the city. Maybe we should take a vote over here on how many people would like to have a marijuana store at 402 West Lewis. Yeah, sorry, I'm, not, I'm sorry, we're not going to, we're not going to do that tonight, Carl, thank you. <laughs> Ma'am, is, is this by a t different topic than retail cannabis sales? My name is Bonnie Dickman, and it's... I just want to say one thing regarding David Morgan and his wife, Shiloh. David has grown into an excellent businessman. And if any of you were to go look at where he does have his place in Spokane, it's absolutely wonderful. It's clean. He's made a very good progress at what he's got. And um, All right, ma'am. Thank he you. Just, I'm a, he's I, just a good businessman. That's what I wanted to tell you. Thank you. Sir? Good evening, Council. Stephen Bauman here. Three quick things. One, it's inappropriate to dictate what somebody says in public in a public comment period. Second thing, um, this has been on the Council's agenda for years now. I think you need to take some careful consideration and, and address this marijuana thing. Third thing is I think you need to uh, maybe consider and uh, adjust the format of the of the city's council meeting to put the public comment period or potentially a second public comment period later in the meeting to allow the opportunity for public comment on some of the actions that take place after the typical public comment period. I don't think it's uh, it's uh, done properly where that the public can't address some of the actions that are taken. Thank you. All right, appreciate that. Any other conversations? Again, if, um, I, I'm going to ask if, if there's anyone else that wants to speak about uh, Mr. Morgan directly or cannabis. I'm going to I'm going to ask you not to speak tonight. I'm going to I'm, I'm going to ask you to leave the podium. Hello, my name is David Penn. Uh, totally different subject than that, although I support that. Uh, kind of reaching out uh, a lot of feedback from the community. I spoke at the vigilant of a kid that was killed over on Road 68. Uh, just want to address like the the, the shootings that are going on, like, you know, what can we do to support these teenagers out here with guns? Uh, they sh uh, sorry, I don't, <laughs> I just kind of caught up. It touched me real close as a family. But um, maybe establishing some dialogue for some outreach centers, uh, something for the inner city youth, black, mech, Latino, white. You know, they're all having issues right now with uh, gangs and 
and just not having an opportunity to grasp onto something else. There's a lot of kids right now that are just teetering to be sports athletes and go to college. And then there's some that's following their footsteps of uncles and dads into a gang culture. Uh, I know a lot of kids that are out from Pasco. I'm from Pasco. I grew up here. And I just see, I don't see anything being done. You know, when we were, and I wasn't the great example as a young kid, but, you know, uh, there was more people in the community that were at least saying something to us. I see just a lot of kids just, uh, just out in the streets with no guidance, um, no one to talk to, no community center to go to, or just no opportunities to not choose that lifestyle. It's only giving them the opportunity to, to choose the lifestyle. So uh, maybe we uh, could establish something to help these kids in the city uh, to focus on succeeding instead of uh, what's going on right now. Because in Pasco, Kennewick, it's happening everywhere. I don't know if, you know, so maybe gang in, uh, interventions, some mentorships uh, with people that have been through this already. Um, and that's kind of all I wanted to say tonight. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, one more call for any visitors um, that do not want to speak about retail cannabis sales or specifically uh, Mr. Morgan and his, uh, his credentials. I'll get you next, ma'am. Yes, sir, if you could state your name for the record, please. Hi, my name is Octavio Rodriguez. Um, I own Just Juice in Kennewick. I own a construction company. Um, I'm an actor. I've been on uh, guest star on multiple TV shows. Um, I say that to say that I smoke marijuana every day. And I don't mean to talk about anything regarding the retail sales, but just want to give you a little bit about my story. Um, I've done all kinds of drugs. I've snorted cocaine, I've hallucinogens, I've done that. I mean, all kinds of things. Um, as long as it wasn't injected or, you know, I didn't smoke crack or anything like that. But um, I drank a lot of alcohol in my younger years. Um, I had two heart attacks when I was 18 because of alcohol, cocaine. Um, Mushrooms, acid, DMT. I haven't done drugs since. I smoke weed every day. It hasn't affected me. I own multiple businesses. Um, I'm a functioning member of society. Weed isn't the issue, and demonizing weed is absurd, and it's time to move forward. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. All right, ma'am? Yes, please. My name is Terry Henricks, and I live at 8401 Tucker Drive in Pasco, Washington. And I thought it might be interesting for everybody to know what Pasco was like back in the 70s downtown. I worked there for almost 10 years. It was booming. There were, but there were, there were also homeless people too. But you know what? Those people, we had Young's Connection. We had, um, there was a Primus Shoe store. There was a real great uh, jewelry store there. There was a, a record store on the end of it, on the end of the nether. There was also a beauty school that sat there on the corner. There's also over here. Um, anyway, what I'm trying to say is cannabis, you know. Ma'am, we've, we've heard, excuse me, ma'am, we've heard a lot about cannabis tonight. And I'm asking you to no, please if you can. No, I was going to say, I was going to say cannabis was there then. Okay. I, I watched witnessed backdoor deals. And this is in the 70s. And I wanted you to know, I think you would find this interesting. I knew Peanuts. I'm giving up my age now. But um, I knew him. I knew that man. I was there when they did the, for the fountain, when they, the fountain got put in. It was wonderful. It was fun. It had nothing to do with Latinos. It had nothing to do with whites. It had nothing to do with anything like that. 
that's not where we, we, when we get to looking at the, the race portion of it, that's not good. That's just not good. And like I say, that town can be booming. I've watched it. I worked there. I mean, they took those homeless people, they would take them to the top hat and buy them soup, the managers. That's how they would handle it back then. And you know what? I also witnessed guns back then, policemen chasing other men down the road with a gun, and the guy's wig fell off. They had to put a chair over it. They ended up <laughs> shooting him in the back alley. Um, then I watched another happening across the street when there was the Pasco Post Office. Some man was running down the street through what I look, went over and looked to see what he threw because the police didn't see him throw it when they were chasing him. And it was a big rubber raft. So all of this stuff did take place back then, even when it was booming. It had nothing to do with, I mean, I, 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 I don't know what to say, except for people were buying marijuana back then too, and it was the black market. And for me to see cannabis, cannabis people this is right, I'm, I'm sorry you're, you're, one you thing just wrap up. one thing yes, okay wrap up. Thank you. my my impression is if you're not going to let something legal come into a place and be sold legally then you're supporting the black market all right thank you any last comments from folks on, again, not related to um, Mr. Morgan directly or on uh, cannabis sales or use in downtown? Craig, I want to say something. I'm sorry, Mr. Cortinez, you've had your opportunity tonight, so. Not I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Cortinez, you've had your three minutes tonight, so thank you very much. Please feel free to send us an email. Um, you know we'll read it. Thank you. you any, any other member of the uh, um, public would like to speak tonight? All right, thank you very much. And with that, we'll wrap up our. Uh, our public comment tonight. Um, I'll ask my fellow council members to meet us for a short break, or are we ready to march on to the agenda? I'm here in power through, so let's we'll go ahead and move on to item seven, uh, reports from committees and or officers. Whew. All right, um, uh, uh, Councilmember Campos. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Maloney. I don't envy the position you're in. That's quite difficult, and thank you for running a tight, tight ship. Um, I had our Ben Franklin Transit uh, Board of Directors meeting on Thursday. It went quite well. Our new general manager is, uh, she seems very promising. She seems to know her stuff, and we are very excited. I, I saw Clint Diddy, her smile. Uh, <laughs> he had a grin on his face the entire meeting. She is uh, also running a very tight ship. She's looking, condensing some of our committee meetings, uh, along with, um, you know, Jeremy Bishop. And uh, I just really look forward to seeing what she brings to the table and um, doing work on that board. It, originally, it was a little bit of a chore, but... It seems that she's brought a little bit of new life and I'm really looking forward to seeing what the, the lady can do. All right, thank you, uh, Councilmember Campos. Uh, Councilmember Mill. Uh, thank you, <clears throat> Mayor Tim. I did have a couple good things that went this last week. Uh, one, I've been working on a, a grant for the city of Kalima with the multi-club, the Rotary multi-club, and it did get approved, took forever, but uh, to get uh, rehabilitation equipment down there in Kalima, so it was really good. Now we're waiting on them to finish up their part so that the money can be transferred. So anyway, that was great news. And then also, um, on a second note, we also had our COPA meeting, and I had a meeting with Blanche Barajas, and other staff uh, last week and we talked with the uh, mayor of Kalima about her visit coming up here next month and I thought it went well and uh, very excited about the sister city and uh, interaction between us and the different things that we could do to grow our community and then I also had the chamber lunch today which was really good and we had a really good discussion about how gas prices got to where they are and uh, I won't go into it, but I will say if you really want to hear another good speech coming up, we got Mr. Uh, Dave Zabel will be speaking next month. So uh, if you want to hear his good speech, come next uh, next month at the Pasco Chamber. So anyway, that was it. Right, thank you. All right, Councilmember Serrano, do you have anything to add for reports? I've got nothing to add. Thank you. Excellent. All right. Looking around, I don't see any other lights on, so I will move on to the next item on here. Eight hearings and council and council action on ordinances and resolutions there relating thereto. None listed. 
move on to nine, ordinances and resolutions are not relating to hearings. First up, we have um, an ordinance amending the Pasco Public Facilities District Charter. Uh, Director Ferguson, or not Director, uh, Mr. Ferguson. Yeah, sir. Sorry, so, I tried to give you a promotion right now. Yeah, so I'll tell you what, I'll take it. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that sounds good. Uh, so yeah, so this was uh, the item that uh, uh, we spoke a, a little bit about uh, last week. We didn't have an ordinance uh, put together for you yet because uh, we weren't exactly sure about what all it would entail. Um, we uh, went through the process, uh, looked at uh, the charter in depth, and really wanted to make sure that uh, because the, the uh, PFD board is getting ready to adopt their bylaws, uh, which, uh, as uh, most, most folks know, is, is really the thing that they use to operate their their day-to-day uh, -day, uh, business and their meetings uh, and their rules uh, for them. Uh, we were concerned, and I'm, I may uh, have oversold a little bit uh, my uh, concern with regard last week to uh, the extensiveness of the charter, um, and going really through it and, and, and as we're step-by-step step going through the, the bylaws that we were recommending as well as the charter, um, there really, uh, we, we thought there was more redundancy than, than I think that there actually was. So um, I feel like I kind of uh, led you that there was going to be a ton of changes and I really only gave you about uh, half a sentence of changes here. So, uh, um, uh, but uh, it, it's also one of those things that um, uh, just because you could change something uh, doesn't mean it's necessarily the right thing. I think we've got a really uh, strong charter. I think our bylaws uh, that we're going to propose to the board uh, tomorrow uh, fit uh, really well with them. Uh, I think uh, they should be able to do all the business that they need to do, and uh, I didn't want to. Uh, uh, I didn't want to uh, get caught in a situation where we're, uh, we're we got a solution looking for a problem. I think uh, we're we're really in a good spot uh, with both of them. So um, with that, uh, we just ask that uh, you t uh, consider the uh, the minor change um, that uh, related to the ability of the board to. Um, hire and employ and uh, contract for their own staff. All right. Thank you, Mr. Ferguson. Uh, any questions from uh, council? Councilman Serrano, do you have any questions this item? I do not. All right. And then I would entertain a motion. I move to adopt ordinance number 4604, providing for amendment to the charter of the Pasco Public Facilities District and publishing a restated charter and further authorized publication by summary only. We have a motion from uh, Councilmember Compost. Do I have a second? I second. Right. And and then seconded by Councilmember Brown. Um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, aye. say nay. Oh, thank you. Uh, any opposed, say nay. All right. Uh, with that, uh, we have uh, an approved uh, ordinance number 4604. Move on to uh, next item on the agenda is uh, um, item B, ordinance for a budget adjustment, Schlegel Park uh, boat launch, and Park Improvements Project. Uh, Director Signal. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Pro Tem, the amendment that you have uh, in front of you is a standard one uh, that the council, council has uh, gotten used to seeing for some of our projects that might need some budget adjustment. Uh, Schlegel Park bid, which was approved by council very recently, this is uh, an amendment um, to reflect that bid. Uh, and differences between what was budgeted for this biennium versus um, the actual bid that came back. All right, thank you very much. And I will, I will certainly say from my perspective, I appreciate the budget amendments along the way, so it's not one big wrap up at the end where we're trying to remember what yeah. we did. So very much appreciate this practice. Any questions or um, comments from council? All right, with that, I'll entertain a motion. I move to adopt Ordinance number 4605, amending the 21-2022 biennial budget of the City of Pasco, Washington, by providing supplement thereto and or to provide additional appropriation to the City's Capital Improvement Fund for the completion of the Schlegel Park Boating Facilities Improvement Project and future authorization, future Perfect. authorized publication by summary only. I'll second that. All right, we have a motion by Councilmember Campos and seconded by Councilmember Roach. Um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, please signify by saying nay. All right. Uh, resolution uh, or ordinance passes. All right. With that, I'll move on to item C. Resolution, notice of public hearing date for LID number 151 final assessment. Director Worley. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem and Council members. I uh, just wanted to remind everybody that LID number 151 is the Northwest Sewer LID. And with that clarification, I'd be happy to turn it over to Maria Sarah, our CIP manager. Good evening. 
uh, Mayor Pratan and Council Members, we are here presenting to you a resolution to fix a date for the public hearing associated with the final assessment role for LID 151, which is Northwest Sewer LID. As you may remember and may have seen in the packet, this uh, project, this LID was passed in 2020, construction started in 2021, and now has been finished. Uh, recent uh, project acceptance came to council, and we are now ready to provide a final assessment role. Following all the regulations of LIDs, we will do that in a public hearing setting. And um, a few things to note is that when the LID commenced, it was a uh, conform of eight parcels. We now have about 80 parcels that are part of it due to subdivision, and there's still a lot of land to be further subdivided. So the sooner we can do this process, uh, the easiest it becomes for all of us involved. Um, another item to note is that the project originally was anticipated to cost $5.8 million, and due to very, very competitive bids, uh, the total project cost uh, came down to about $3.3 million. So that's a considerable uh, reduction in overall cost, which is reflected in the assessments. And with that, the uh, time chosen for the public hearing for the final assessment role is September 19th at 7 p.m. during a regular uh, council meeting. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer. All right, thank you very much. Um, council, any questions for uh, Ms. Sarah? All right, then I'd entertain a motion. I move to approve resolution number 4230, fixing a time and place for hearing on the final assessment role for local improvement district number 151, and directing that notice thereof be given in the manner required by law. I'll second that. All right, thank you. That's moved by uh, um, Councilmember Campos and seconded by Councilmember Roach. Um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, please say nay. All right, motion passes. All right, with that, that we're done with section nine. We'll move on to 10, unfinished business, none listed. 11, new business. Um, we have one item on there um, for an appointment of the, to the Tri-Cities Regional Hotel Motel Commission. Uh, Ms. Barnum, it has you as the, uh, the listed uh, discussion, but I'm happy to turn over to Mr. Zabel, who is light on if you prefer. Mr. Zabel, please. Good evening again, uh, Mayor Pro Tem and Council. So uh, our longtime uh, Tri-City Hotel uh, Commission member and appointee, uh, B.J. Patel, after many, many years of serving the city very well, has uh, stepped down, uh, leaving a vacancy. So we went through the process, which under our interlocal agreement, uh, essentially is the Tri-City Hotel Motel Lodging Association uh, working through nominations. They put forward uh, a nomination of uh, uh, Mr. Beach, also of A1, uh, Jerry Beach of A1 Hospitality uh, to uh, take the role on as a as commissioner for the vacancy. So I'll note that um, you know, for those in the audience that aren't, aren't familiar with uh, uh, the, the tourism promotion area, it's, it was created through an interlocal between the three cities, uh, uh, Kennewick, Richland, and, and Pasco. And uh, essentially, uh, there's uh, the, the TPA assesses a fee uh, under the authority of the three city council members per room, generates a certain amount of money for tourism promotion. That money is distributed to the city and then back to the TPA through uh, a work plan, which uh, this council hears about about twice a year. You get a budget presentation, which you're going to be getting fairly soon, next month or so, and then a mid-year report. Uh, so with that, uh, the um, council action requested tonight would be to confirm the appointment of Jerry Beach. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Zabel, for, for, for that explanation. And, and I will certainly say that um, uh, Mr. Patel has been just an amazing community advocate and a longstanding uh, member of, of a number of organizations, including the uh, Visit Tri-Cities, and he's, he's spoken very eloquently about the needs of Pasco in our tourism industry. So he will be certainly missed, and I, I hope he's still going to be around the community to, to help us out when we need it. So um, with that, is there any questions or on the uh, agenda item tonight? All right, I'm hearing none, so if I could uh, entertain a motion, please. 
I move to confirm the appointment of Jerry Beach, A1 Hospitality, to the Tri-City Regional Hotel Motel Commission for a two-year term commencing on September 1st, 2022 and ending August 31st, 2024. I'll second that. All right, thank you. That was uh, moved by Councilmember Campos and uh, seconded by Councilmember Milne. Um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. All right, uh, motion passes. All right, with that, um, item 12, miscellaneous dis discussion. Uh, Mr. Zabel. Just one, one quick item, given we had a lot of discussion on uh, the cannabis issue. Just a reminder, the workshop next week, uh, it's not gonna be necessarily open to public comment, but uh, council will be considering this issue. And obviously tonight we heard a lot of broad perspectives on it. So I think uh, it warrants the amount of time council spending on this. Thank you. Councilman Roach. Yes, um, City Manager Zabel, just a quick question. I know we sometimes have special meetings. Uh, are there ever special workshops that we hold? I, I would think that as many people who turned out today, there's probably a need to have listening sessions with the community to allow them to at least speak freely about the topic. It's not always fun to be on the receiving end, but it is certainly necessary. So, um, yeah. Do, can we have a special workshop? I mean, that, that is something, if the majority of the council wishes to do that, we can, we can do a special, it would be a special meeting. It would be, in, okay. Yeah, in front of the workshop. But um, that's certainly something we could do that would allow for public comment. Uh, I, I think, our, our think our thinking, at least from staff standpoint, was to be able to provide council some policy questions for council to answer. Uh, and part of that would be uh, direction on an outreach plan. You know, we heard everything tonight from additional meetings to wrap it up to advisory vote. You know, so I mean, there, there's a lot of differing opinions out there. I, I think that's pretty much runs the gamut right there, but uh, at least on that particular issue. So I, I think probably there's some time council is going to need to talk among themselves. So that that can happen in a workshop setting, uh, or we could do a special meeting, get a little bit more uh, public in, uh, input before council has those discussions. That's really up to council to decide. All right. Thank you. Right, thank you for that question. I had, I had a similar one, uh, Mr. Zabel, if you don't mind me following up and then um, sit. Please go ahead and come <coughs> Thank you, Mayor Portem. I was just curious with the special, I know you said it's at the beginning of the meeting. Could it ever be like at the end of the meeting where you could actually hear what people said after the presentation? I mean, Sometimes, you know, we have our own opinions and what we think, but it's also good to hear people's opinions after they hear the same thing that we're hearing. Or does the procedure have to be, especially, does it have to be at the front? That's what I'm asking. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times we'll do it on, on front because just the, on the hierarchy of meetings, I guess, a special meetings a little bit more, has a little bit more weight in that meeting because council can actually take action in that meeting. And... Uh, so hitting a 7, a 7 p.m. meeting time is pretty easy. Having a workshop where you don't know exactly how long it's going to go and then having a start time for your special meeting, oh. we could wind up having to cut the workshop short or it could go long and we'd be late starting the meeting or you know I've seen where councils have maybe even started their meeting early so we wouldn't all sit around for 20 minutes and then you know, there's folks that said, hey, I thought the meeting was starting at 8 o'clock, and I got here at 8, and you guys are halfway through it, so. Okay, I guess my, my main point would be nice to actually hear some feedback from constituents, you know, at least if it was like one minute long or whatever after the presentation, but if it's not possible, I'm just saying it would, it would be very nice to hear what other people are thinking when we hear something, and then sometimes you hear different viewpoints, so that's why I was trying to get out more along the line what Mrs. Roach was talking about, so. Thank on you, that right. note, Councilman Councilman, Councilman, thank yeah. you, Mayor Portem Maloney. Councilman Milne, you bring up a good point, and I think it's important because a lot of times, you know, what we discuss and we kind of workshop up here oftentimes already accounts for what the public has to say. And um, I think sometimes it's been fruitful, especially in like opportunities where we can, we can kind of maybe discuss public hearings, right? For example, where we can kind of discuss an item prior to it going to public hearing. It's like, oh, there's a lot of people in the room. And it's like, oh, the council all is in favor of a certain way, or they all have an opinion on this that mirrors what the public, uh, the audience is saying, we have less people come up and, like I said, there's, to, to the audience's credit, you know, we have provisions in the Open Public Meetings Act where we can kind of condense and try to streamline our meetings, right? So we are allowed to, you know, put a time limit on things, 
um, try to limit, you know, redundant comments. But and so something like that, I think, you know, Councilman Milne, you bring up a good point is, you know, there, there may be less comments based on the fact that we're taking this very seriously, looking at all the angles, doing our homework, getting feedback in emails, et cetera. And then if we have open dialogue up front, it might answer a lot of the questions or concerns that people in the audience have before they come up here, right? So I, I think your point is valid, um, but I understand where the staff's coming from is it's very hard to plan for. And so I'm not, I'm not twisting the wrench here. But I just think it's, you know, David brings up a good point. I think, you know, council can layer their, or council can uh, run their agenda item how they want to run it. You know, if we if we want to have a special meeting starting at 7, we can give the presentation. Council can decide we're going to do a little deliberation here first and talk among ourselves because you can only do that in a public meeting. And then, you know, once, once the council's uh, had enough dialogue, they can certainly open it up to public comment and get the public's opinion on whether or not there should be special use permits or whether we should what what the outreach uh efforts of the city should be you know as we as we move forward on this or the other items that uh you know which zoning districts should allow cannabis and what shouldn't you know that those are those are things that uh, after you've discussed them and everybody's kind of heard the facts and some council opinions and and debate on it uh you know there, there would not be any anything wrong with the council then saying, let's, let's hear from the audience for half hour or so. So, so if I understand Mr. Zabel, um, we don't have to have set up as a business meeting or a special meeting to hear from the public. Is that correct? We could allow you, for you could actually do that workshop. in your workshop. You just have to waive the rules in that workshop on that item. So if we want, if we wanted to, we could have public comment before and after during a workshop without having to worry about a specific timing of the meeting. Is yeah, that or, or you could just do a special meeting right at seven and on that particular item and do it that way. However, however council wants to do it. All right, appreciate that. And I know, I know personally, I, I very much want to hear more from the public, and I'm, I'm frankly interested in some of the listening sessions sort of format that we've had in past for before our council retreats where we have more of a public forum that's outside of council chambers, which allows people that maybe not feel fully comfortable speaking at a council chamber in this very strict and time limited and um, business focused meeting and allow it to be more of an open dialogue about, about this topic. So um, certainly I'm, I'm interested in having that conversation next, next week, next Monday, as we as a council try to figure out how do we, how do we move forward correctly on this. But I think that, that for me will be the right time for us to maybe, maybe set out for staff the direction that we need that we'd like uh, staff to start pursuing. Um, but certainly it does it sounds like we will not have any sort of there's no resolution there's no ordinance that's going to be met next week's meeting we're going to still be discussing how, how we want to proceed and and what the big topics are is that that's my understanding uh city that's accurate, okay. that's accurate. thank you so just to clarify i'm sorry uh, just to clarify can we put it on the the agenda after we hear from people like uh public comment section where people can or i mean are we are we up for that or not that's what i'm asking are you asking for tonight? Uh, I'll wait. Oh. No, I'm, I'm all, saying. I'll wait in. Let's say, Mr. Serrano. At the workshop meeting, yeah. after we hear the presentation, could we have a section where the public then could comment, you know, whether it be one, two minutes, or the three minutes max? I mean, I know it's going to talk to the meeting later, but this is a pretty big issue. I'm just asking if we could put it in the agenda, but if everybody says no, I'm, I mean, I'm amendable to what the council wants to do. I'm just saying it would, to me, make more sense after the presentation. To let to bend the rules, Mr. Zabel was saying, and or change the rules for this particular thing. Um, so I'm asking to do it, but if everybody doesn't, I'm. I just want to see where everybody else is at. Thank you, and just just to clarify on that, we could change. Could we change the rules as part of the workshop, or is that be an official action that you need to be taken, uh, Mr. Ferguson? I'm looking at you, and then Mr. Serrano, I'll, um, I'll absolutely turn it over to you. Sure, yeah, so you get to run your meetings, uh, you get to be in charge of those and how you want to do those. Uh, typically, uh, there's a couple different things you have to look at. You have the, the uh, OPMA, which is the, the state code, and then you have your uh, your own code, uh, your PMCs. Uh, and so there's a lot of flexibility in there. Your current agenda is in the code uh, this way. You can uh, obviously uh, do that a couple different ways. The chair of the meeting always has the ability uh, to open it up uh, to comment. The biggest key there is to make sure that it's equal. That's really the biggest concern is that uh, anytime you open for comment, if the chair decides to do that on their own, uh, they can do that. Uh, the council can also do that as a body and uh, elect a change, uh, adopt an agenda that would uh, be different. And I think that's, I, I believe that's what uh, Councilman Melny is getting at is a potential 
uh, council change going forward. But it, correct me if I'm wrong, though, I think what I'm hearing, though, is that next week is just the workshop, basically the, the process to talk about what the process will be. And um, and then we'll get that. But uh, so uh, that's what I would recommend, just because at this point, uh, it doesn't sound like there's clear direction on what those next steps would be. And, and if it's a workshop and it's not uh, an immediate, there's nothing uh, that's going to uh, need to happen the, the following week at the regular meeting. Um, I think that gives maybe a little more time. But that that's just my suggestion. But certainly it's your meeting. Right, Mr. Ferguson, I appreciate that. And um, if, if you don't mind sending up perhaps a memo on that to, to let us know what we can and cannot do at next meeting um, and so that we can change on the fly if we need to pivot. Uh, Council Member Serrano, I apologize for cutting you off earlier. No worries. It's, it's always hard to participate remotely, when to say, when not. Anyway, uh, caveated with my understanding of the meeting is the same as Mr. Ferguson just expressed, that being that we're talking about what, how we'll talk about this in the future. I don't know that next meeting is the appropriate time to bend these rules to allow for additional public comments. Um, I don't think we'll even come up with a particular plan. We will at best give staff direction about what we'd like to see. So I, I don't know that there's a whole lot of value in um, just extending the meeting and, and hearing those comments. Um, I, there's no way everyone in the city of Pasco will agree um, on how they want this rolled out. And I think we should come up with a plan, uh, a strategy, whatever you want to call it, to implement on how to socialize this. Uh, Mayor Pratam, I've heard you advocate for those listening sessions. I think those have been wonderful for city development, and I think they should, should, could, and will operate in the same manner where we'll get, uh, you know, that broad swath of constituents. We'll hold it, hopefully we'll resolve to host them at different times, different locations. Um, and, and that, to your point, is much, much less rigid, uh, much less, much less formulaic, and hopefully, you know, I'd like council to always be inviting in our chambers, but I know that's not all the case for everyone. So hopefully, by implementing some type of strategy, we can hear from more of the community. So again, I, I don't think we need to invite comments. Um, obviously, if people are very adamant about how they want to advocate for or against the position. They ought to be contacting us via email in the interim. That's all I'll say. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Serrano. Um, so, Mr. Zabel, I'm not sure we gave you a ton of clear direction, but um, I think we all expressed that we want to hear more and we want to hear more feedback as we develop a path forward. And so, I would, um, I guess, I would ask for you, for staff, to be ready for us to pivot um, next week if we so choose after hearing from um, from from staff. Um, is that is that a reasonable consensus? I certainly don't want to speak for everyone, but I, I, that's kind of what I'm, what I'm hearing is that we're not sure we're, we're wrapped around a, a path forward here. Right. Mr. Dable, any, any other comments or thoughts on this? Yeah, I think we have that clear. I, I, I don't <laughs> think, I mean, ne next week, uh, the, the process or the discussion is going to be about uh, what the process might be on how we go forward. So I'm assuming that's probably where public comment will be. It's probably not going to be on the pros and cons of retail marijuana. It's going to be, should we or shouldn't we do an advisory vote? Should we or shouldn't we require a special permit? Those kind of things. And I probably not a lot of folks are, maybe that, maybe I'll read this wrong, but I think uh, the bigger issue is should we or shouldn't we, period. And how we do it is probably not as, uh, probably won't elicit as much public input. I appreciate that. And Mr. Zabel, I think uh, when we see the ag um, draft, our agenda come out next uh, later this week, I think we'll also have an idea of how much we want to, uh, how late we want to stay that evening. All right. Um, any other miscellaneous discussion this evening? All right. I am not seeing any. Um, so move on to item 13. Um, I understand there is a need for an executive session tonight. Um, so we, um, City Council will now meet in executive session to, for, uh, to discuss uh, consideration of site selection or acquisition of real estate purchase or lease, if likelihood of that disclosure would increase the price per RCW 42.30.1101B. Also, for a consideration of the minimum offering price for sale or lease of real estate, if there is a likelihood that disclosure would decrease the price per RCW 42.30.1101C. And I believe we need to announce the factors involved in that. So that's staff to uh, let us know what factors we might be considering for that. So I think the primary ones would be uh, price, of course, uh, timing of development, and uh, proposed use. Excellent. Thank you. 
And, and the third item we'll be discussing in executive session is a discussion with legal counsel about current or potential litigation per RCW 42.30.1101I. All right, um, and we'll be joined by the city manager, um, um, uh, Mr. Ferguson, um, for our attorney. Um, who else will be joining us tonight, Mr. Zabel? Deputy city manager and myself. Excellent, and um, it will be an executive session for 20 minutes. I'd ask for a five minute recess first, so we will be back at 9.10. Also, I apologize, Director Ratke as well. And Director Ratke. Virtually, Ratkei. yes. Excellent, thank you. All right, for that, we're, we're, going, we're adjourned to executive session.
and there's a need for us to extend executive session by five more minutes. We will be returning at 9.15.
All right, we are back from executive session and with no further action in front of council, we are adjourned. <laughs>